Hello, good evening. Good evening. How are you? Very well. How are you? Yes. Back. Fantastic. Back to normal. That's great. I'm so happy <laughs> to see you. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Just Nicole. adjusting. Yes, please. Sure, take your time. Yeah, is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, I think fine. Absolutely. So thank you, firstly, Gita Ji, to agreeing, I mean, for agreeing to come on board and uh, chat with me today in the backdrop of the workshop that we're planning. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Thank you for asking me because um, uh, I've not been a very workshop person, but um, I feel at this time when we are all in a lockdown situation, I feel arts have to play a very major role in, uh, in healing, in uh, keeping our sanity, in um, seeing some kind of uh, sense in the arts and why we are doing it. Yeah. So I feel the larger context needs to be defined sure. uh, now more than ever before. Yeah. In fact, yesterday I was just writing something on um, um, how the arts have been mar marginalized by the administration and how the people are actually uh, coming center stage and saying yeah. we need the arts, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. So I think it's going to be a movement from below yeah. and it has to somehow Absolutely. reach yeah. the powers that be, you know, Absolutely. and say that uh, this will not happen. And, you know, in the scheme of things, somewhere the arts and the artists have to feature. So I think this is the time when um, uh, all of us need to uh, handhold whatever we can do. We need to support in whichever way we can, because I see the, the kind of restlessness amongst the young and um, the kind of dejection amongst the older ones. Um, so I think it is, uh, it's meaningful to share and to, to dialogue and to yeah. talk yeah. because I think talking, talking is very important. In fact, yesterday I just made a call. In fact, Paduaka called me yesterday and just to inquire about my health. And, you know, we, we got talking for an hour. You know, it's just right. that there are yeah. so many things to talk yeah. about, you yeah. know, yeah. and um, that's what I feel. We don't we don't talk enough amongst ourselves, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I think this is a great platform yeah. to reach you. many many people, yeah. and um, uh, and it's it's a very varied group. So you know, it's nice to kind of also get questions from them yeah. and kind of understand what the situation uh, is and. Um, and, uh, and, you know, to, to understand how the minds are working. Yeah, so this sure. is a great platform to, yeah. to, 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 to thank you, yeah. Akila, and you're Most doing a great job. Thank you. And uh, that's so really kind of you. You know, I was going to introduce you as, uh, you know, I remember watching, being part of this workshop uh, that you yes. conducted for Dr. Shridhi Chidambaram's uh, Nautical Conference yes. 2018. And it was called yes. Collaboration yes. and Abstraction in Bharatanatyam, the journey that's from right. dancer to artist. And it's relevant, yes. what we're going to be talking about yes. is in some sense, you know, I thought today when I was thinking about it, I thought this was, this particularly struck me and I will, we will talk about yes. some detail as we go along. Sure. Uh, but, sure. I, sure. but I still remember that workshop. I was sort of obviously part of the organizing team. So I was waltzing in and out of the door, but I still remember <laughs> how beautifully you kind of uh, explained and demonstrated how a dancer seamlessly segues from being a dancer to becoming an artist and I thought that that That's still true. remained with me so I uh, yes. want to thank you for coming on board and just allow me two minutes to formally introduce you uh, to everybody uh. else <laughs> just like I have a very yeah. yeah. um, uh, Gita Chandranji dancer, choreographer, teacher skillfully weaves abstract notions of joy, beauty, values, aspirations myth and spirituality in her dance She's the founder president of Natya Vriksha, an artistic director of the Natya Vriksha Dance Company. In her effort to end dance the universe, did I pronounce it right? Yes. Okay. End dance engages, the universe. Yes. She engages in a strategic range of dance related activities, performing, teaching, conducting, singing, collaborating, organizing, writing, and speaking to new youth audiences. Her niche interests, as you all know, include environmental protection, gender equality 
quality issues, hygiene, cleanliness, arts education, and she's really a spokesperson on larger cultural issues that affect and impact artists. She's a recipient of several awards, including the Padma Shri and the Sangeet Natak Academy Award. Uh, Geeta Ji, I read a beautiful quote by Martha Graham, which I'm going to share as a con to set the context for our interview. It says, practice means to perform over and over again in the face of all obstacles, some act of vision, of faith, of desire. Practice is a means of inviting the perfection desi desired. I thought it was beautiful. And I'm going to therefore You're start off firstly by asking you, are sadhana and practice one and the same? Uh, sadhana, I think practice or riyaz leads to sadhana in many cases. Because uh, first is the ritual of practice. There's no getting away from that. Right. Riyaz is the first step. Because uh, unless you, it is a step by step process. Because uh, you cannot suddenly jump to something. It's like in meditation or in yoga or in uh, the spiritual quest. You have certain uh, uh, steps that you, ladders, ladder that you take. It's the same in dance. But um, in dance, what happens is this mind-body construct is a very complex kind of a situation. So when we talk practice, very many times people think it is only the body. Yeah. So yeah. I feel, I feel, and you know, and our teaching, when we teach something which is ancient, which is traditional, we somehow think that we don't need to make the student think. We have done all the thinking. And uh -huh. you just replicate what I teach. Yeah. And that's where I think the whole thing uh, doesn't then resonate as a creative art form for the young, you know. So I seriously feel that learning a dance form has to be with the learning of a lot of other things along with learning of a creative dance style. So I feel uh, when we talk down and we say, Gurus, you know, that's where the pedagogy goes through uh, a questionable yeah. thing, you know, as to when you teach an adagu, are you only wanting the child to do an adagu? Right. Or do you want the child to understand anatomy, physiology, breath, uh, stretching, where is the muscle being used? What is happening to the inside of the dancer? Right. I think all this has to be done, as we say, uh, for a child, you know, the, 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 the formative years are very important. In the same way, I think your learning process, what that you've gone through, reflects throughout your life. Yeah. You know, yeah. has gone through. Ni every Sarali Varsha Katindangardi will reflect even when you do a Kacheri. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know? Actually, Gita, so that's... how you learn, yeah. how you learn this is equally important as what you learn. Okay, you see, that's interesting. So yeah. how you learn, mm -hmm. how you learn. So that's why I think Nachi Riksha, when I started teaching, I looked at pedagogy and we were always told, Talaripu is done like this, please do it. That's it, you know. So to come out of those compartments and to think, I think there was lots that my college friends, my peer, I think there's lots that, that went into that uh, being able to take risks and come out of that boxed in situation mm -hmm. and question certain things. Why should it be done a certain way and why not another way? So I think these questions and then in a, in a, today I think uh, I do so many things like I do, I do work for myself as a soloist. I do work for my students at various levels. I create work. I also create work for my company. So the three things are so different. Mm -hmm. So when I sit and enter my very, very sacrosanct space, my studio, which is like my temple. And when, when somebody asked me, you know, uh, what should be your last wish? I said, I should be practicing in my, in my space and just go, mm -hmm. you know? So this space is so special. It's given me so much. I have given so much to the students and there's been such a healthy Change. interaction. Yeah. 
Yes. So I think the dialogue has to start from the beginning because today's generation is not our kind of generation just, which yeah. just accepts things, you know, and they like to uh, to question, to deliberate, to, to, to kind of, and I think the group learning has been great for me because my company, it's like a seamless kind of a strong one body, you know, right. so all of us really are together in it. So coming back to the learning, I think the learning part in the initial years is what ultimately leads you from Riyaz to Sadhana because you've already started that process of uh, not really just imitating what you're taught right. but negotiating a lot of things around while learning. Right. Gitaji, why? You know, yesterday, last night I had this conversation with Maven Koo. It was about of, uh, to perform or to be. You know, and I was thinking today yes. about sadhana and I was thinking why yes. for some instance, and I may be wrong and please correct me if I am, that why is sadhana somehow an act of being and perhaps not of performing? Somehow we perceive it as an inward looking journey rather than an external yes. act that is seeking validation. Would you agree? Uh, you know, in dance, it's a little more complex because yes, sadhana is largely associated with the religious uh, spiritual journey. So here you learn a technique, you practice a technique over and over again, you perform the technique and then you forget that technique. That is then becoming sadhana. Okay. Where the technique is really, you're not bothered about whether your hand is in place, whether you're breathing right, but you just fly with the technique. Hmm. Whether it is also in Abhinaya, because hmm. it's got so much of improvisation that I never fix it. I never fix anything. So the Abhinaya is the, really the place where I feel that meditative quality, that sadhana is possible yeah. because you just go and fly with, with a certain freedom that you experience. And I think sadhana is all about liberation. You know, right. so there is that 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 technique which binds you and then you free from that technique in order to fly so i think that is sadhana when you reach that point i think that is where sadhana comes in maybe in a performing career sadhana comes in when you've performed a lot and you've experienced the performance and it now doesn't really matter yeah. you know it's it's that that I, I agree with Maven when he says that, you know, it's just being, it's just being, and you're not proving anything to anybody, not even to yourself. Yeah. You know, when you put up, when you put the confines of performance, it's always proving yourself. Right. right. You know, and so, you know, for me, I think that, that the final uh, rehearsal which I have for a performance right. is always my test. Yeah. That is my test, right. not the performance. Right. But that last rehearsal is always oh. for me the real uh, test yes. because that's the space where I've created the work and I, the other things, you know, there are a lot of constraints on stage. Suddenly the light is not working. People yeah. are walking across. The musician is also distracted. So many things. So here in this space, when you finally rehearse, that is sadhana. Hmm. That is when I am in control. And normally after that rehearsal, I just go and I don't talk to anybody. And I just want to be in, in that space for a while. Right. Because you've created that with great, uh, uh, you know, hard work. And you want to be in that space. You know, that space yeah. is so special. What you've achieved after doing what you've done. So yes, it is very, and I, I think it's very personal. Again, right. you know, you choose. You. Yeah, you could be part of a collective group, but your sadhana is purely personal, right? Very personal, very personal. And it's very hard to put into words what you experience sometimes after maybe doing a varnam. And, you know, you have sweated it out and you worked hard and you, and, you know, you, so many things you imagined the previous night you have thought, what actually comes out might be something completely different and you've painted a completely different canvas and you wonder, you wonder at this 
fabulous art form and you say wow you know what 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 is not possible with this art form you know it's so amazing that the mind just you know it just because it's it's for me it's very much governed by the music and the musician right if two musicians sing sing the same piece i do it completely different because their style of music is different the way they sing is different their breath is different the way they so they enunciate is different yeah. the yeah. enunciation is different right. you know so the dancer it has to react to that enunciation in fact i for long, for many years arun was singing for me when i was young in mm. delhi and you know i was um, he was a very flamboyant musician yeah. and uh, i used to always compete with him nee and the sangathi pota nanu and the munjil and the sangathi i will also get <laughs> so you know it was like that that kind of and you were young and you were kind of you know after that i had another musician who came in vasanthi krishna rao and she was all about tehrav or notle nepa you know i just suddenly realized oh my god silence in dance it is so beautiful my whole dance changed so you know dance is all it's it's not written in stone that's why i keep on telling my students that it's always work in progress and it has to react to so many things and i envy my older seniors because i have i've seen yamnya ka sonal where they've had musicians stay in their own house you know they've had mridangis and uh, natuvana stay in their own house so morning used to be just you know four hours of practice with the musicians today i feel so sad for these dancers my dancers who have to dance to recorded music all the time they are dancing to recorded music you change the pace a little and they they just stand they just stand yeah. because yeah because they're so used to the rigor of practicing on the on the tape yeah, no. on the recorded music that uh, a little here and there or sangadi maati paadi na they will they will freeze so i think um, uh, this is one aspect which worries me about today's dancers because they do so much of practice on recorded music that um, you know sometimes it takes away uh, uh, when they perform live they don't really react and get the energy from them when when our seniors used to perform we used to see a lot of the energy given take uh, in the thing and i used to enjoy always performing live simply right. because you know the musician brought that 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 quality and you kind of translated and on that you created your you own uh, imagination yeah. so right. you know that uh, is is something that i feel there's a big change in today's scene right. because um, uh, everything is so nool pudicha madri irkano it is should be so uh, you know performance should be like a you know that like so, so set yeah so uh, yeah, yeah. so sometimes when i see a dancer i myself feel is the dancer really bored of over rehearsing you know okay that you know i i, I feel that she is not excited about what she's doing you know then right. <laughs> there has to be that 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 ambiguity you know on stage where uh, you could make a mistake but you could also get into a 100% you know right. unless you leave that room for uh, for negotiation yeah. uh, it it will never cross a 60% right right like but over rehearsal and sadhana are not the same right not at all yeah. over rehearsal i think is uh, is, uh, is 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 um, counterproductive in a sense because it kills the creativity you know you set everything to such a degree yeah. that you you Uh, mm-hmm. for me for example i have six or seven versions of a nadana madinar i have learned it when i was uh, at 9 or 10 and I, with each teacher i have reinvented nadana madinar according to my frame of reference as i am growing as an artist right so you know i revisit the piece every few years so right. uh, so i think that's the joy of uh, of that's where what we learned from the natuvanars they would say you know setra ke ma pari if it works if it doesn't work we can always change it around you know so that quality of always Improving. creating then uh, you know again doing something uh, so i think that 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 makes practice very very enjoyable practice yeah. cannot be draconian and practice cannot be something that is you know seen as a must do or it should not be um, you know triggered by um, uh, peer pressure 
or by uh, some kind of an inner uh, guilt these are not the things why you practice correct practice has to come as something that you enjoy something that you learn every time you are doing something something that you discover each time you are doing a movement i and i i kick myself many times and i say why didn't i discover this before about this movement you right. know so practice has to be discovery practice has to be fun practice has to be joyous so i i sometimes feel Uh, this sweating it out is all very good but you know um, it has to be accompanied if you want to have lambe raise ka ghoda what you yeah. say yeah, you know yeah, yeah. if you have to target a long race you have to engage in every aspect of the dance like vision you know, over visibility one, right yeah vision over you know visibility. so it can't yeah. be just a monochromatic yeah. thing that you do Absolutely. it has to have all the nuances it has to have all the colors all the rasas you know so 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 nothing time is also important for riyas right you just sit and think you just ponder you know you just listen you just read all this engagement is all part of riyas riyas doesn't mean every time doing a tatai taha taihat taihi is not or doing a margam is not only riyas riyas has so many other things you know that uh, uh, that makes the whole uh, uh, interesting the whole whole process interesting you know correct uh, gita ji so in a sense uh, sadhana itself from whatever i understand is a is a sort of a mature emotion it's something that you know it's like it happens at it's like a turning point for a dancer when a dancer recognizes that this is not merely just practice this is a sadhana of sorts right and you also also, word also i think yes questioning and also i think the dance has to become your own ah, vocabulary yeah you see you learn something then the teacher of course has to customize it for you because you know many movements i see when i see the two dancers with different body types dancing i have to customize movement right. you see so that is leading them into finding their own voice you see so one size fits all doesn't work what works for one can never work for the other Right. imitating copying just cannot work you have to find your own language it's it's like it's like writing akila you write you know that you develop your own style of writing don't right. you otherwise why would you be different from somebody else right so I always ask my kids why should somebody come and watch bharatanatyam we have to question ourselves we always crib that there is no audience there is no audience correct shouldn't we think Why? many times people tell me that bharatanatyam is boring i kind of agree bharatanatyam <laughs> is boring yes it is boring why because it's become same it's become monochromatic you know the same kind of thing is happening earlier you had these gurus and you had these gharanas and you know exactly what to expect when you went to a varuhur varuhur school you knew you would have those beautiful jatis you would have that beautiful grace you would know you would have those stances suddenly like kamala you know you knew what to expect you go to a mutsami pillai style you knew what to expect right. you went into a kitappa pillai style you knew what to expect so you know now when you see the jatis are all the same they are all by the mridangists so you know there is the sameness in the sound in the kanak in the in the mathematics so i feel that you know that that variety of uh, styles and variety of expression how will it come back mm. unless we train our students to get their own language to get their own inner uh, uh, self to express their inner self which is their own through the medium of dance that has to be that is a long process there is no shortcut it's a very long process you learn a, a thing the teacher customizes it then you you practice it over a period of time then you keep doing the the regular margam and then you slowly start and explore so it is a it's a but then today you know the problem is also that the youngsters don't get enough opportunity to do 
a margam. Before that, they are asked, what is new? Have you composed anything yourself? <laughs> you know, so these kinds of questions are asked so often that the pressure to do something on their own, even if they don't feel the urge to create, they are very happy doing the margam and exploring the margam. Yeah. You know, the margam needs many years of exploration before you can step out of the margam. Right. You know, so right. so stepping out of the margam can be very fashionable, but at what point in time do you do it? Make that. Yeah. It's very crucial. It's very yeah. important. Absolutely. Gitachi, what is the role of, of a teacher, of a guru, in being able to um, help a student um, discover or uh, deep dive into her sadhana or her or his sadhana? How does, what is the role of the guru in it's, doing that? This lockdown has taught me a lot because uh, I've started teaching. All my classes have moved to okay. Zoom. And um, I realized that I cannot have the same kind of class that I had had here. So the entire pedagogy has changed. I had to think a lot. I brought in lectures. I brought in a lot of reading. I brought in a lot of Abhinaya because that was easier to teach. A lot of talking to the students, which I never did in a class, I realized. You know, I realized as a teacher, I needed to talk a lot, you know. And they used to, in fact, feel that, oh, you're lecturing there and here, but you're not talking to us. Because we get so preoccupied with tangible benefits out of a class. Are you in the item? You know, so there is this pressure when you are in class to kind of also you feel if you don't teach something new, maybe they get demotivated. Let me carry on. You know, and in, in one hour, one and a half hours, how much can you do? Yeah. So this time, you know, they are really enjoying it because I'm talking to them, I'm dialoguing with them, I'm asking them to write, I'm, I, I'm, I'm sharing things like just day before yesterday, I shared that beautiful quote of Balama who has, you know, uh, described the Margam as a, a ritualistic temple, um, you know, where she enters with the Alaripu from the Parikrama and she was a beautiful one which we had read when we were young and I and I could see stars in their eyes you know and then I told all of them to write a paragraph on, on what they feel after reading this so I think uh, I think this is what I'm saying you know writing critiquing dialogue uh, communication all this makes them think more that's all it's not the skill they might not tomorrow go to a, uh, to a paper and write but all this introspection makes them think about dance makes them really uh, you know and analyze what they are doing and why they are doing right. so i think this this uh, lockdown has really made me think as a teacher are we doing enough you know, we need right. to do much more and right. there can be lots of things there where we can bring in, of course, uh, you know, iconography we took on and we, all the sculptures we discussed and um, we discussed Kapilaji's book. So there are lots of things that we've been doing and um, I think that's engaging them much, much more than uh, uh, because just doing a regular class because right. they have time to think. They have, they have that that window now to think. So we yeah. put all these seeds into their heads, then, you know, they think about it. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, Gita Ji, because even I've been noticing that there is a sort of, a, a, the focus has sort of shifted towards learning, right? I notice that yeah. people are trying to, you know, learn new things, learn new skills. Yes. And even though everybody's yes. complaining about being busy, everybody sort of yes. opened their minds to learning. I feel a lot, Absolutely. People, including me, I feel like I want to be a student again. I want to learn a new skill. Yes, you know? yes, uh, yes. So I think I, it's, it's a great time to do that because you're catching up on a lot of things you wanted to do, but you never got down to doing, yeah. you know. Uh, many people are cooking, for example. I mean, that's something that they didn't find the time to do earlier. Yeah. And now they're all doing it and enjoying eating it also with right. their families. So I think that's, right. that's uh, something that's... Another thing in this context is that... Um, I think the teaching has become a little confusing because there's too much of inputs from all sides. Sometimes it gets cacophony, you know. So much is being told to a young student. That's why I think in the older times, the teachers used to say, where a dance, 
you know that used to be uh, you know uh, seen as close things but then the fact is sometimes i see sense in it till you reach a certain stage be on track and be focused learn one one a uh, form of expression fully after that you know you can go and you can fly yeah. but now you know this with the workshops and with so many people saying so many things in so many different platforms i don't know what the head is going to be of these young dancers I and know. what are they going to take and retain and what they are, because it requires great uh, great intelligence to synthesize all this right right absolutely it's over stimulation so, right yeah yeah who is going to help them synthesize all this you know so i feel information is all all right but how are they going to make that into knowledge and how are they going to make that yeah. transition and, yeah. and 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 see what works for them and what they want to retain and what doesn't work for them you know that sifting is very uh, very important because yeah. i remember I remember one instance when uh, you know when we used to go to Kalandi Mami to learn Abhinaya, and Mami's was a very very um, you know Mami used to sit and teach us, and we used to learn. And I used to always wonder when people performed, the first half you had to be was learnt from a from a from a Natavanar or a guru, and there was a lot of angi kam and all that, and suddenly when it came to the padam, it would become like this. So you know. so there were very few who actually took the idea of abhinaya from mami and made it into a performance skill you see because it is one one body saying the varnam and the padam it's not two different bodies and you can't have two different people yeah, yeah. saying two different yeah. speaking two different languages yeah. in the same program yeah. so you know that synthesizing what you learn from two different teachers or two different because now i also see that people have multiple teachers you know so how do they synthesize what what they are learning is yeah. a great skill oh, and yeah. very few have the intelligence to synthesize Actually, that yeah, otherwise yeah. you are a confused head where you don't know uh, you say this item is that teachers this item is this teachers this item is from that workshop this item i mean i would i would go mad if i had to do this kind of a thing you know right. because um, um, how would you negotiate this and that was adla photo me then then you can't put it in this because this teacher said it has not taught it like this <laughs> so this becomes how do you how do you then um, i don't know you know how these people these children actually negotiate i would like to love to talk to one of these people who have gone through multiple things and ask them yeah. as yeah. to how do they really uh, see this whole thing how do they document it how do they remember what what they've learned from one teacher when they move to the next teacher it's complex it's very right. complex right Kita ji, talk to us about how uh, your sadhana was when you were growing up as a dancer, and when did you have that sort of that turning point when you knew that you had to kind of sort of make the transition from just being a dancer and like really pursue this with passion? I think it is a it was a process because my first teacher uh, never really taught dance as a as only a performance skill. She always wanted to create artists you know because she herself was a complete artist she could play the veena she could give a full triya kacheri she could dance she was tiger varadachari student and my mother used to learn the veena from her she she was a very very absolutely fantastic veena player so so when we saw that we really felt unless you could do all this you are not going to get anywhere you know the bar was already raised and my music teacher meera sheshadri used to sing for dance as well so she used to always say in my music class also id bhavama paaduma bhavam irukano paatla so you know everything was connected you know so uh, it was not in xylos really so uh, the music the dance the rhythm everything was together um, so i feel um, that learning has always stayed with me and i have never been able to completely see dance as only for performance you know it is something that's very close to my heart and i do it on my own terms the way i feel i would never create a piece for somebody or to please somebody or uh, you know for a foreign audience i see people saying that's the market hence you create a piece so that you can you know take it to that festival those kinds of things i i'm not geared like that i'm not a uh, value judgment panel eh? but i one is not my, to, to you know wired like that because of my first learning after that i went to the, my next teacher 
and I was pushed into performance craft. You know, Dakshina Muthi Sar was all about performance craft. It was just the opposite of my other earlier teacher. So, you know, I suddenly was pushed into and I, I enjoyed that because I was young and, you know, this whole thing of performance and, you know, pieces which we had never done earlier. Anga, Amma, Orkla, you start with Alaripu, no, Pushpandali, nothing. And here you came and the first class itself, he says, I was like, what's this? You know, very, very, um, it was it was a complete shift for me. So, you know, that shift, I think, uh, was nice because I have that base. Then the performance technique got added to, uh, to this. And the fact that all my subsequent teachers respected my first teacher so much. You know, that was also a blessing. They would yeah. always say, Akka soli onnu panna deyada, You know, they'd never meddle with it or never. In fact, they would ask me to again and again dance it and they wanted to see it right. because they did not come from the Tanjavur tradition. So, you know, they wanted to learn from that. Wherever I went there, would ever, even when I went to Bombay to Malingam Pulisar, he would say, Akka inna soli tanda, adha, andha padatha panna ni, anang panni kami. So, you know, there was that, that, respect for uh, the each other you know and they really bonded so beautifully so so i think um, learning was the, uh, that's what yesterday i was just uh, when i was thinking about this whole thing i said probably we are the last generation of dancers who have learned from natu anars and not professional performing artists yeah. see that's when dance changed because after us next generation are all dancer teachers who have been teaching yeah. right. so you know so there is that that shift after 19 i would say in the 90s that shift happened you know right. and dance took a completely different shade because yeah. you saw one teacher one natuvanar would teach 10 children and nobody would do it the same way Still right. all 10 wow. would do it differently all 10 would do it differently. Dakshina Mutisar had put one Jatiswaram and we'd all go and, you know, we'd individually learn. And then when you go to the class and we one class, we all do it together. Everybody had a different uh, uh, adabu pattern. Everybody had, because he would test his creativity all the time and, you know, create things. And same Jati would be done in 10 different ways. And he says, So, you know, so for us, like it is, uh, no, that's why I said, yeah, again, yesterday I was thinking, when we say about, Transferring legacy, it's not items, it's the philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Legacy yeah. is transferred in terms of philosophy. It is not in terms of items. We have to see, understand this. You know, the philosophy towards arts, that is what you pass, pass on. Not, I don't want my items to be carried on by my students. That is never my idea. But they should be creative. They should, they should just fly. That's the idea. So, you know, the philosophies differ from from person to person what they want to uh, you know take forward so yeah. i think uh, you are sure you are you know also you know i what i have created in my 30s and 40s or in the in my 50s i cannot teach to my students i just cannot yeah, yeah. because i think you need that maturity to do to do those pieces yeah. you know so i feel that's why Dandai Dupani had this beautiful first Varnam, you know, he would say, Enna, uh, yet ways, ways, moha mana soli Anne or varnam Just about your mother, you know, Anne Maravade. Just a Varnam for little kids. So he said, let them learn first mm -hmm. that, then go on to the Shringara pieces. And right. you know, there is there is that level that you take in Abhinaya. Anne Maravade is ya Abhinaya Panin point. But uh, eight year or nine year, Mohamana, chuma kaiye panno padi. Moham, I mean, what do you know? So, I think these interesting things that uh, different teachers looked at pedagogy, how they saw that it can be tweaked here, it can be changed around here. I think everybody in in their own generation brings their own refinement to the art, and that was what was so beautiful about the tradition. Right. Beautiful. Let me, I wanted to ask you two questions. One is, is sadhana, I keep coming back to that because at the core of our discussion, yes. sadhana is, uh, is, is it sometimes, can it ever be outcome oriented? That's number one. And number two, yes. 
is it a sort of singular pursuit like you know uh you can't just kind of be like waltzing all around and still say i'm doing my sadhana like uh, could you explain uh, that idea you know, like again sadhana is a is is different for different people for sure but uh, i feel it is a lonely journey because essentially indian classical dance is a solo art form solo, whatever yeah. you might say yeah. it is a solo search of the soul for the paramatma so you know yeah. that is the definition given and that is the way we are taught the dance that is the way we are practicing the dance but i think i explored a lot and then came back to the solo you know yeah. i'm now back to the solo so i think you know there are many things in in the 90s and the early 2000 12 was all for me about collaborations about doing something new about doing with puppetry doing with theater doing with that doing with this i just felt so excited and driven by other art forms and to be to juxtaposing uh, bharatanatyam with that so to the extent that many critics said ay namo panindraka bharatanatyam panindraka theriyadu but at that time i thought i enjoyed that you know i enjoyed that 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 feeling of wanting to collaborate wanting to you know the, today that has become the norm that's norm. a different thing but you know then uh, that's another thing i think you need to take risks right as an artist you need to follow your heart you right. need to take risks at at points of time if you feel strongly about something go and do it don't worry idu pannina enak music academy kadaikado this kind of thinking is very very i think very very myopic yeah it's it 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 is not at all going to work who am i trying to please what is your goal what is your aim is right. it to grow as an artist or get one program somewhere you know i mean that's something you need to decide for yourself right right so you know so that whole sadhana comes out of all these experiences which make you richer and which make you uh, an artist who understands other art forms who, who relates to lot of other artists from other uh, genres and being in delhi i have learned so much from my mm-hmm. colleagues odissi dancers kathak dancers what is rigor for them what is rigor for me yeah what is abhinaya for them what is abhinaya for me you know there's so much of dialogue that happens right. we work so much together so i think all this makes you go towards sadhana you know because you you also you also become much more um i i feel much more um, inclusive you know you need to be very inclusive and i feel some of sometimes we do get very insular with our art form and right. we are so look, inward looking that you need to open up a little more and see what's happening all around you know right. and uh, take from there so then that makes you much uh, much more evolved from yeah. inside which is Absolutely. which is the whole idea which is the whole idea of anekanta which i did it from yeah. jaina philosophy i remember that which yeah. is which is about multiple realities you know everything is valid you have a certain style that's equally valid and equally your own and e- as creative as some other style which is doing something else in a certain way so i think that acceptance not really looking at uh, something unless you are a certain way you are not going to be uh, accepted i think that uh, that philosophy i don't subscribe to i have dancers of all sizes and i think some of them are such fantastic dancers you know the, they they do so beautifully but i know they can never be commercial successes yeah but they are fabulous artists yeah we see her yeah Yeah. So, but what is it? So, what is it? Art is art. You know, you can't stop it. In fact, some of them uh, they transcend the body because you know the body is not their uh, only resource. Yeah. So they have to tap other things. Yeah. You know to communicate. Yeah. yeah. And 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 they do it so beautifully. Right. So I think all this needs to be understood. And to just say that you know you need to lose weight, otherwise you can't dance. I'm sorry. I mean, no. Everybody. has a soul and it's dancing you know and you have to create space for everybody and and i think as long as they are dancing from their soul and there are moments when you when you feel like crying and when you feel it's like saying wow that's dance yeah you know lovely geetachi i'm just going to take a couple of questions is one from kashi 
Hi, Kashi. Yes. He says, uh, Gitaka, what has been your experience after being on your own apart from your teachers? Yes. I think I even when I was with my teachers, they gave me space to be on my own. Right. You know, so Natuvanats were like that. You know, you want to do something, do it. I'll be there, but you can do what you want. So, um, you know, being on my own was uh, um, very, very nice because um, I had great support in terms of uh, listening to lectures by Jeevan Pani ji, Saxena ji. You know, they filled my head with so many ideas. And you could just make a phone call and say, Mujhe ye Sanskrit ka verse samaj nahi aara hai, aap zara mujhe bata dijiye. So, you know, we had so many resources which we could tap and uh, yeah. while creating. And then we had musicians who would just sit hours on end with us and patiently try multiple uh, multiple options today yeah. you know you it's like commissioning you say this is what I want please create it and give it and it's more sometimes done online or sometimes done from somewhere that is not the creative process that we are used to and we were fortunate and lucky at that time to be able to sit with yeah. a musician and for and and while the music was created you know the, the Natuvanar would sit also even right. though he had not much of a role, but he understood what was happening. So the yeah. team was on the same page. Yes. Yeah. So I think, um, and the same, when uh, when I think that the rhythm part was being negotiated, the musician would be sitting there and singing the line over and over again. Supposing you're doing a, a, an adavu pattern for a swaram. We would always see how is the ending and then try and match the ending with a corvey that would lead to that ending. And then, you know, the matching would happen. So there's so many things in the work process that we did as a team. And that's what was so beautiful when I went on my own, you know, and when I started creating. But I had all those tools with me, which I had worked very hard, 20 years of music, already 25 years of dancing, and then a lot of watching dance, a lot of reading, a lot of listening to lectures. I think all that also was responsible because I, I could tell the Mridangis Indian in the Marivasi. You know, yeah. so, uh, you know, things like that, like in a shlokam, earlier a shlokam used to be loosely done. But now we play, I, I, I heard the Pakhavaj playing and I was so fascinated by the Pakhavaj playing. So I used to tell him, why can't we bring that kind of a playing in, in the Mridangam? So I think that kind of a team uh, effort uh, yeah. in creating is something um, I, I really feel that we were blessed to be to have those kinds of musicians who had the patience time and and and, and you know a commitment you know to right. to to do uh, to do that kind of creative work um, so I, I i feel bad for the children because it's it's tough nowadays because it's become so expensive also to to engage with musicians and to have that kind of a time and energy to 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 create work Right. Gitaji, I know that you, you are, uh, you know, also a musician, keen ear for music. How do you encourage your students to kind of, you know, your dancers to actually develop that? Because that's really so important, right? Would you believe that a that's, dancer also needs to be a musician in a sense? Uh, I feel it's a must, but everybody doesn't have the bandwidth right. in when they, when they are studying because unfortunately all my students are academically very bright. What do oh, I do? Okay. You know, I, I always wonder, you know, if they are very good in academics, they're very good in dance. So it's such a tussle to kind of, you know, uh, to make those choices oh, and to keep them. Uh, so, so, you know, many of them are mus singers, but uh, they're not really uh, musicians of very trained quality, but they understand the cadence of music simply because in my dance class, I sing every yeah. class I sing, I do not make them dance to recorded music. Right. So when I'm uh, singing a new Sangadi in a Varnam, they actually look at me and say, ah, okay, at least that much, that, you know, yeah. 
we are able to give otherwise if they dance to recorded music it's the same phrase the same thing over and over again so that was another advantage that all my teachers could sing so when they came to class they would sing a shruti box right. which in the party the class edpa so yeah. i practice i do the same however much my throat goes for a six again and again you sing the same piece and then i think when you talked about the which i will do in my workshop right is to to take the same piece and do it in different pace yeah yeah you know because we have a set thing sa ni ta pa da ma ga re ne re sa ellarum gattu pa amma so i i what i make them do is i make the same jatiswaram they do in two different pace so what happens is the body has to negotiate the piece which means slow dancing is much more difficult than fast dancing so when they do the same phrase slow they have to think how are, how is the technique going to change for the slow how is the technique breath everything going to change for the fast yeah so this is part of the process of not seeing things as set or completely written in stone yeah yeah you yeah. see you can play around with it you know you can you can change the pace and you can the whole texture changes last yeah. and well i think three classes back i made them do the same meera bhajan sung by two different people back to back right i said did you feel different yeah see if you feel you know oh, okay. so these are experiments which you need to constantly do make them aware of everything make yeah. them aware of pace of what the music is how is it being sung it's not good to say four times paadi to ni poite re yaar vanna paadatu eppadi vanna paadatu no right. what is that four, four times what is that person going to sing and how is that going to be translated into the dance right it's very very important yeah i just love this feel different uh, uh, geeta ji you know because in a in a sadhana i wonder whether it's also possible that some days you you feel different right and some days of course yeah of course you know some days you know you just and you know uh, in sadhana you end up going back to some key pieces which are very close to your soul correct and you want to do them over and over again you know i have that i'm in that stage where i want to i i do i've done the whole thing of you know increasing the repertoire doing that that and ultimately what what you're left with is that some pieces which are so close to you that you can dance it almost every day of your life and still feel so happy and contented like mother's food absolutely <laughs> yeah, like that yeah <laughs> you never get it's like you keep returning to it it's like coming home yes so when people say it's something new 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 i wonder you know why aren't they finding happiness in doing a piece over and over again you know right the yeah. whole thing in, in 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 dance is reinforcement and you know finding newer right. things in the old yeah beautiful um geeta ji there's a question from uh, vini natakshetra Who says what's your opinion on whether a dancer should stick with her or his style dance form, or can also learn different dance forms? Uh, I think uh, it's possible to learn multiple dance forms because we've grown up watching. Actually, they used to have two two sets of orchestra. Sonal ji used to perform Bharatanatyam and Odissi, and she used to have two sets of orchestra. same way yamini we used to go yamnyaka we used to go there used to be sometimes three sets of orchestra she used to do bharatanatyam second section would be kuchipudi and third section would be odissi so you know i, I don't see uh, any 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 problem in that but today it is becoming difficult because of the logistics also you know it's hard to uh, kind of um, um, give that kind of time and energy to each style see they did it with also a social uh a uh, reason because at that time kuchipudi was not being accepted so they had to go on doing kuchipudi with bharatanatyam and saying this is equally valid and this should be accepted as a classical dance form so there are a lot of other socio political reasons why people did it but today i think um, um uh, each style is so demanding and so highly competitive 
that um, a lifetime is not enough to really do one form well and to ju to do justice to it takes so much of energy and time that it's difficult to kind of do multiple styles and excel in mm -hmm. all of them all of them right um Gitachi, i wanted to talk to you about you know i read uh, just as i was gearing up for the interview about hard work and humility being the two core principles of uh, sadhana i'm just going to ask you about by virtue of you know a dancer and an artist you know uh, on this journey of sadhana what are some of the life lessons how does it actually transform you as a as a person and why is that transformation yes. really important because we also you know i think to, yes yeah. we we are, we are very scared of talking about our vulnerability yeah. we never we yeah. never taught to Talk. discuss yeah. we are supposed to be superhuman we are supposed to be superstars we not have any flaws we never i have had lot of problems i have had lot of health issues but dance has been my you know strength so it's 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 it depends on how you you use the art form to overcome what what you go through so coming out of motherhood you know after motherhood was one big problem where one had to negotiate postnatal blues body going out of shape all that thing one had, and but i became slimmer than what i was before i conceived charanya so you know you have to work hard at at every point and um, uh, now this covid i don't know i read more and more they say there there could be neurological problems the hair fall there could be so many things the more you read the more scared you get but you know the moment you the days i don't dance i think i, I i'm going to uh, i i go into depression so if i dance i feel happy like that day is you know uh, on on a high you know so i think it depends everybody has problems and i think how you use it how you deal with it and how you use dance as therapy and how you use dance as a strength to come out of all that is that the is challenge the that's the challenge so i everybody has knee problems everybody has issues everybody has health problems i think all that is part and parcel of life and it just goes on and how you negotiate with it how you come out of it how you talk about it i think nobody is superhuman here you know yeah. everybody is in this very real world right so right. i think it's which is stressful which is difficult so i think we how the inner strength comes through your art form and how you use the art form as a strength i think absolutely. that is a big yeah. lesson yeah absolutely somebody says dance as therapy um i was just going to ask you one last question nagita ji before uh, you know we sign off is sadhana merely about you know for an artist is it merely about dance and other allied you know aspects or is it also a sort of way of life you know dance itself is a way of life for any serious dancer you know it cannot be otherwise because uh, uh, you know rajiv my husband always complains because uh, middle of the night 2 o'clock i am up with some idea in my head and i am moving my legs and i am you know moving the bed so you know he is saying what is this please you know so you never switch off as an artist you know you are constantly engaging with something or the other you see a tree and you are you are trying to recreate a movement you are trying to see how nature can impact you you see a full moon and you are just gazing and sitting there so as an artist is a, is it's a way of life you know artist the 24/7 you are an artist you know there is it's not only when you are in the studio you are an artist I, i think it's a state of being it's a state of mind you know and unless you are that passionate i don't think you can call yourself as uh, engaging with the arts you know yeah. i'm sure it is like that for a painter i'm sure it is like that for a musician uh, you know so there is no specific yeah. place to dance it's not as though i'm if i'm in the studio only i'm dancing i'm suddenly seeing something but my mind is you know doing something else and when we used to learn abhinaya in the in the in the in the you know we used to take a bus to come back and in the bus we used to be revising the abhinaya bits and you know so you are dancing throughout you are dancing all the time with your mind so i think uh, there is no other way but to be uh, your life whole life has to be that right uh, 
um and also sadhana is so much about sticking with the habit right sticking with the habit and staying pa that's another thing with the youngsters yeah. i yeah. think staying pa to be on the same track uh for a long time you know it's not about uh, the quickies that we're talking yeah. about there are no shortcuts you know you have to stay in that path take the highs and the lows i always say people want professions where there are only highs no lows how can it be like that you know right. every profession has its highs and lows and um, a long gestation period unfortunately in the arts nothing has come uh, very very easily unless we were you know, unless uh, uh, no, i know until i think 36 or 37 we never got to go out on an iccr tour or we never um, so you know it's only in the 40s that think things materialize you have to stay the course till then so you know there is no jumping you can't really jump things you know there is that 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 thing of staying the course right but given in a world where which is so uh, where like like we rightly spoke about like so much stimulation information overload do you think youngsters have the uh, the time energy um, you know uh, to be to actually like like uh, engage in sadhana the way all of you did i mean i'm just wondering like It's a very different world. I think it will be a different. I think it will be a different kind of sadhana because many of the um them are multitasking, yeah. and when you multitask and when you come to dance, there is a separate kind of commitment that I see because you know you you are denied that for that time when you are doing something else, but when you come here during that time, you are so focused. and it's wonderful to see that yeah. so i think it will be a different kind of uh, um uh, definition of uh, sadhana and definition because nothing is going to remain the same everything has to change change is the only constant we all know that so i think expecting them to be like us or expecting us to be like our our earlier seniors is is really not the same because times have changed and we have to see the reality that uh, arts don't uh, cannot keep your kitchen fires burning many of them will be doing a lot of other things and dancing so i think uh, it's going to be a different uh, kind of a uh, a sadhana that they are going to engage in but sadhana nonetheless this is not the less sadhana yeah, in fact sadhana. i find there is more of a struggle because we had the luxury of staying in one thing for uh, so long you know they have to do that and do this as well and that is quite a strain quite a stress yeah. but we expect the same kind of uh, uh, level and caliber from them absolutely so you know it's it's, it's very hard it's very hard right. or else you should have uh, you know um uh, all all the time have a mentor with you who is kind of helping you that's why i handhold my students to a large uh, degree because simply i feel that they are making that extra effort to do so much and still be so committed to the arts i think it's my duty as a teacher to also reach right. out and fact, you know be there for them on that uh, geeta ji there was a question from uh, dancing dentist he says has geeta ji seen that state of sadhana in her students despite academics yes yes of course of course i think uh, uh, i i'm very happy uh, many of them are uh, extremely sensitive i should say that would be the word extremely yeah. sensitive um extremely nuanced you know that would be the word very nuanced and um, they look for that that extra quality in the arts you know that's something that is intangible you can't yeah. even describe yeah. it you know absolutely so that rasa that quality yeah, yeah. you know so in a class if i see that even in a fleeting moment the day is made for me you know so because this is not something that a state of mind where you can be in for long yeah it's very yeah. transient absolutely you see so i see that i can see that that moment coming and going and you know i i see i can i am very happy you know i i just feel yes this That's is the beautiful. course <laughs> i think sadhana itself is 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 sort of a seeking the intangible right absolutely absolutely yeah. and nobody can define it nobody can you know put it in words it just is 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 something that uh, uh, 
uh, you know you just experience it and as i said it, it is not you can't stay in it for long you know long, yeah it 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 just comes and it just uh, uh, engulfs you and yeah. then you are suddenly um, you know it's like it's like the the gopis in vrindavan you know that very very um, uh, fleeting moment where uh, divinity comes in and there is that 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 the moment they see and then it gone it's all gone they also forget it you yeah, know yeah. so um so that that yeah. that kind of thing you know but thank you so <laughs> much geeta ji for you know sharing so many lovely ideas and insights i really truly appreciate it and just for those who don't know sadhna with purpose a workshop by geeta kundal ji is scheduled for august 1st if you go to the alap concepts page you can uh, there's a link that you can sort of sign up and register for the workshop thank you so much geeta ji please stay safe thank you. and thank you for thank being you so much. inspiring and sharing your story with all of us you know it was truly thank so you. like fantastic that you came out and you told us what you went through it was truly very heartwarming and more power to you thank you thank you so much thank okay. you thank you for everybody who tuned in all the best good night stay safe